Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and I want to get back to a story that we brought you as breaking news just yesterday. We checked in with our Fox 13 Seattle team to get the latest information. We now know that three people are dead after a suspected stalker broke into a Redmond, Washington home and killed a podcaster and her husband. That information from police. The woman's mother survived the attack, escaped and called 911. The shooting happening at a home on 166th Street Northeast and Northeast 89th Street, if you are familiar with the area, on Friday morning, very early, about 2 a.m. According to Redmond Police, officers responded after a woman called 911 at a neighbor's home to report a stalking situation. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a 35-year-old man who lived at the home in the front yard, and he had been fatally shot in the chest. When officers entered that home, they found the man's 33-year-old wife and that suspected stalker both dead after being shot. I do want to play for you our Fox 13 Seattle team's latest story that breaks down the information we have so far. In the first homicide in the city of Redmond since 2021, a crazed stalker obsessed with a woman killed her and her husband before turning the gun on himself. This is the absolute worst outcome um, you know, for uh, a stalking case. Police Chief Darrell Lowe says this man, 38-year-old Ramin from Texas, is the suspect. He came to the neighborhood in this red truck Tuesday overnight. The uh, suspect broke into the uh, home via a bedroom window, uh, that bedroom uh, being the mother's. Uh, she did an encounter the suspect. She was aware of what was occurring, uh, and she uh, knew or realized that she needed to get out and get help. Police say the mother of the wife ran for her life to a neighbor's house to call 911. When officers arrived, the mother and neighbor led them to the home. As officers approached the front of the home, a male later identified as the husband of the victim was seen in a doorway. As officer tried to communicate with him, he collapsed and became unresponsive. Officers evacuated him from the front of the house and realized that he had been shot. First responders performed CPR, trying to save his life, but he soon died. During the investigation, officers found the man's wife shot in the master bedroom, Ramin dead from shooting himself. The petition for a protection order, filed on March 3rd, says Ramin would leave the woman voicemails more than 10 times a week, sending gifts and flowers to her home, even saying he hired a jazz band to play outside her house for two hours, but then called it off. The documents say the suspect would also leave her husband 20 messages a day. He even found her friend's addresses and phone numbers without their permission. Chief Lowe says a restraining order was officially filed with the city's prosecuting attorney's office with a hearing scheduled for March 17th. The restraining order is uh, simply a piece of paper that allows officers to uh, take enforcement action should a suspect violate uh, the court order, but a piece of paper does not protect a, a person when someone is intent on causing them harm. Chief Lowe says it was challenging serving the order to Ramin because he was a long-haul truck driver, always traveling the country for work. It was difficult to, I'll say, pin him down to a location. It wasn't as though he was local and we had a local address to where we could uh, either do surveillance or find him serve the protective order, et cetera. He was in a different state, traveled across the country as part of his employment. So that was the uh, the biggest challenge. Chief Lowe says the woman and her family worked very closely with detectives since becoming aware of the crazed stalking situation in December 2022, even adding extra surveillance cameras to the home. In this case, the victim did everything that they possibly could. Unfortunately, this person, you know, broke into their home and, and, and killed her. And it, it is a, a tragic event. Frankie Thompson, Fox 13 News. Thank you so much to our Fox 13 Seattle team for breaking down the very disturbing details that we have learned here. You heard that according to the protection order against that shooter, uh, the woman met him in June of last year and the constant and harassing messages and calls started shortly after that. The order does claim that he would leave several messages a day and a week and would contact friends of the woman he also was able to obtain her address and the addresses of her friends, despite never being told about them. Several times he threatened to burn himself, they say, outside of her home if she didn't see him. So this brings up a very important topic here. What should you do if you're a victim of stalking? 
Our Fox 13 Seattle team takes a deep dive into why you should never just ignore it and hope it goes away. And that means if you feel that something is not right, ask for help. Ignoring it and hoping that it fades away will not work in stalking situations. Confronting a stalker early could potentially save your life. What's happening with that other person's behavior that's making you feel this way? Why is it inappropriate? Most of the time, we have fear when somebody has violated a social norm. These are the questions Cheryl Michaels wants you to ask yourself if you think you're dealing with a stalker. She's the director of safety and security at Seattle Pacific University. Michaels says if you find yourself trying to talk yourself out of believing in your gut feeling, consider that a red flag on its own. The trauma, the fear of what could happen really is a strong motivator to how we respond to it. And often it's to try to ignore it and make it go away ignore our feelings, our intuition that is telling us something's wrong here and we need to act. That act should be reaching out to friends and family or if it escalates, calling law enforcement. Stalking by definition is repeated unwanted attempts at communication, contact or even harassment. And the worst thing we can do is ignore our gut feeling that says don't answer that call. And after 30 attempts, we're like, okay, if I, if I just answer this phone call, after 30 times, then maybe they'll stop. And all that's done is taught the person who's obsessed that all they have to do is be persistent for 30 times. And then eventually they'll get to make that connection. Michael says once you make a decision not to engage, you need to stick with it. Consistency is crucial with people who display obsessive behavior. If they continue to pursue contact, keep a record of what they're saying because that often is what makes the contact a crime. With stalking and the, the law that's written for stalking, it has to be something that has more criminal intent involved like threats to damage your property, threats to harm you or a friend. Um, it can't just be the mere phone call or text message because then we just have harassment. According to the National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, one in every three women and one in every six men have been stalked at some point in their lives. Here in King County, we do not have information for 2022 yet, but the latest data available shows that there were 20 civil protection orders issued for stalking in 2021. That is up from just 10 issued in 2020. In the newsroom, Nikki Torres, Fox 13 News. A very disturbing story there. Thank you so much to our Fox 13 Seattle team, and we will make sure to stay in touch with them and bring you updates as we do get them.